For God has established His throne, and the ark is the throne. The mercy seat is the throne of Jesus. He rent the veil in twain and then sat down. Sat down. No priest had ever sat down. In the glory, he could sit in the outer court. He could sit in the Pentecost realm. But no priest had ever sat down in the glory realm. But when Jesus ascended, he sat out. Glory to God. Expecting something to happen. And the thing he expected to happen was for you and I to sit down with him and become his what? Footstool. Yeah. <laughs> you don't lay the head on the footstool. You put the feet on the footstool. So the footstool should be the place where the completion yeah. of his body is operating. Right. That's the last thing you do, isn't it? When you sit down, it's prop up your feet. Well, glory to God, you can't prop your feet up till you sit down first. But he sat down. Oh, God, how could he have sat down if he didn't have a body? Somebody say praise the Lord. And then he sat down and called heaven his throne and called earth his footstool. Well, the only thing in this earth is the feet. And they're beautiful. Right. How beautiful are the feet of them that bring good tidings. Publish it unto what? Zion. Our God reigns. Yes. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. So the Lord wasn't off and we wasn't off. God was totally setting us up for more revelation. Because Zion has everything to do with the throne. And the Ark of the Covenant is where Jesus sat out. There wasn't but one seat in the Holy of Holies. And that was the what? Mercy seat. So where could Jesus have sat? He sat on the mercy seat. Eternally securing. Praise God. You said, well, that's Southern Metro. Let it be right on something. Eternally securing our seat in Him. Oh, you ain't worried about losing anything tonight, are you? No. You have never lost it, have you? No. You ain't going to lose it. No. How can you lose something when you're not the one that found it? No. Jesus found it. Yeah. And if he's found it, he said, I've lost nothing. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. Yeah. You can't pursue the throne if you're all the time worried about whether you're saved or not. But if you know you're eternally secured in Him, you can pursue all of God not worrying about whether, oh, hallelujah, what you're going to lose because the only thing He's lost is the son of perdition. And that's our carnal man. And we thank God He's lost that. As in Adam all died, so in Christ all are made alive. Can you say amen to the amen. word of God tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so we got uh, these scriptures. We got a, it, you can just, uh, when the glory is like this, you can start anywhere you've read and preach it all the way back to where you want it because he does the work he said. Uh -huh. And so the Bible tells where we've been reading that, that John heard a voice, saw an open door, and the voice said, come up hither. Yeah. He went up. And immediately there was set before him a throne, and, or an open door, and then a throne, and round about. Everybody say round about. I want you to consider the activity of this throne in those few verses. When you get time, you can go through and circle every one of these phrases. There's a round about the throne, before the throne, in the throne, and out of the throne. Now, do you understand that it's our calling because we're called with a what? High calling. It's our calling to experience every dimension that I just said to you. When we first start approaching this glory, we behold from a distance, if you will, 
we're standing before the throne or around the throne. And around the throne or about the throne, there was a rainbow. There were the signs of stone color such as jasper. And then, glory to God, Hallelujah. around the throne were these four and twenty seats, which were for elders, which is those who minister from the throne zone. Those elders are presbyters who lay hands on people. And so you need people in your life that are operating in that realm to lay hands on you. You don't need just somebody to lay hands on you because they're doing the mode and, and method of traditionalism. But you need somebody who will stand up in that throne realm and minister to you out of that dimension, out of that level. And these elders are crowned with golden crowns. Well, I can tell you now, the more I thought and pray on that, the more I know that's people that possess a mind of Christ. Right. Because these elders know what to do to keep their mind renewed. They take off their crowns and cast them down in the throne. And get down and worship God. And if you don't think that will renew your mind, brother. Right. When you give your mind over to Him to do yeah. the work. Somebody say praise the Lord. Lord. So I feel like there's something. Let me get just a tad more volume. Not much. Just a tad. I feel like there's people even in this room tonight that are going to learn how to get so caught up in that glory that you take your crown off. You take your mind right off. You take your thoughts and cast them over into that realm of God and allow Him to purge out the carnality and allow Him to purge out the death realm. Do you believe that tonight? Because gold is divine nature. And the only thing that can purify gold is what? Fire. And around the throne there is a sea of glass. Glass. But if you read on, that sea of glass will become what? Mingled with something. What's it mingled with? Fire. Fire. So Hallelujah. when we throw our crowns, our minds, yeah. where did Jesus, what did Jesus do? Well, let me have just a little more. I, for some reason I feel like I can't hear me, but it's probably me there. That's good. Is that too loud for y'all? But for, uh, where, where, you know, where do we, should we see the fire? and uh, of sea rather mingled with fire and fire is the only thing that brings out the gold in it because the Bible said much more precious than gold though it perisheth being tried by fire may be found under the praise of his glory hallelujah so we're taking off them old thoughts of carnality and we're taking off you listen here you have to take off that stuff you, the Bible says put off Put off what? Put off the old man. And his conversation. Isn't that what the Word of God said? Well, how many know what your conversation is? It's your thought life. Put off that crown. Lay it down in that throne. And let the fire of God purge you until your mind only thinks His thoughts. Can you say amen? But now we get down to this out of the throne. And out of the throne is where John sees the action going on. Out of the throne there are lightnings. Well, whenever the living creatures go and come, the Bible says they have the appearance of lightning. Amen. Then there's the thunder. Praise God. I talked Sunday morning about thunder being when stuff bumps together, hits, when there's an impact. Glory to God. Both worlds, you see, are impacted. They're coming together. But then Chris and I talked about right after the service, he was talking about how the thunder being that it breaks that sonic boom barrier. That when the something from outside of the realm breaks through into the realm, how what a noise it makes. And I want to tell you something, there's something from outside that's breaking in and breaking the boom. And out of that throne, we're hearing a thunder tonight. There's another world coming into our land. Hallelujah. And then he said, uh, there was fire. There were voices. Voices. 
And then he said he's seen the appearance of the living creatures. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you something. That those living creatures are found in a people who have learned how to ascend into Zion. Glory to God. Zion was a geographical place in the natural, but it is a place of the Spirit where the church has come to its full identity and stands there in the new covenant ministry. Amen. And so I want to talk about Zion just for a few minutes before we get into the living creature side of it. Because you need to know that the Lord said He chose it. The Lord said He was going to dwell in it. The Lord said He was going to come down to it. The Lord said His voice was going to go out of it. Uh, one verse says, Out of Zion, the beauty of God, the perfection has shined. Uh, glory to God. So it's definitely a realm where He perfects His bride uh, and presents her unto Himself uh, a glorious church uh, not having spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. Now for years people have got up and said, bless God, the Lord said He was coming back after a church without spot. That ain't what it says at all. You can look it up and read it. It's in Ephesians 5. It says He's going to present it unto Himself. Meaning that He is going to come forth where that body is at Amen. and take the veil off of her face. Isaiah 28 says that when the covering is destroyed off of the face of the people, death shall be swallowed up in victory. Somebody say amen. Oh, hallelujah. He's, glory be to God. Hallelujah. He's not going to take that bride off and then present her, but he's going to come forth right there where she's at. Oh, hallelujah. We're, at, we're going to usher in. Are you listening to me? We're going to usher in His appearing. Aren't we? We're going to meet Him in that dimension now. We go over there and meet Him. When you women fell in love with your boyfriends, you are always going to meet Him. But praise God, the day came when that marriage was final. And when that went, glory to God, hallelujah. And you know when it was final? When you took His name. Well, glory to Jesus. These people say we're not the bride of Christ. Well, then we're using His name illegally then. Amen. The only way you can use His name is to be married to Him. Amen. Somebody say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. And you ladies, when you took your husband's name, you didn't run around and whisper His name. You did act like you was ashamed of His name. And if you really believe you're married to Him and you have took His name, then you ought to go down in the water and go under that water publicly in His name and identify with His name. Tell the whole world that you're proud. You're the pride of God. Somebody say amen. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. So Zion is where He presents her. One thing we need to realize that in coming to the throne realm, there's only one way you can get there. You've got to worship your way there. You've got to praise your way there. You ain't going no other way. To experience the glory of God in that dimension, you've got to get lost in His presence. That's why head knowledge ain't going to put you there. But it's an experiential knowledge. It's something you have to experience. And the only way John got there, and the only way Daniel got there, and the only way Ezekiel got there, are you listening to me? The only way Paul got there was they worshipped, they got out of the natural. And when they got out of the natural, they got into the Spirit. And when they got in the Spirit, they instantly began to rise into another glory. And another dimension. Can you say amen? Yeah, so we yeah. think about that. We think about Zion because the Lord showed us Sunday night how David took the stronghold of Zion. Remember that? The Bible said that David went and the Jebusites were on the wall. Now think of this if you want to think. If you love typology, just think about this if you will. We know David was anointed three times. Yeah. Yeah. Once for Samuel, once for Judah. And once for Israel. But when it come time for him to be anointed in Israel, everybody was summoned together at the place called Hebron. Yeah. 
Right. Hebrew means a place of communication where the Spirit communicates with you. And when they got in that place of communication, the Bible lets us know that after David took the throne in Judah, he reigned seven years. Seven years he reigned in Judah. after divine perfection. And after he got perfected, he went to the throne of Israel, the main throne over the whole land in Jerusalem. You know how old he was when he got to Jerusalem strong? 33 years old. Now how old was Jesus when he ascended on high? 33 years old. Can you say amen? amen. Was Jesus that perfect man, that seventh man from Adam, that one seventh? Amen. Well, he had to be because it was all fulfilled by 14, 14, 14, 14. All the way you can get 14s to have two sevens together. Somebody say, praise Amen. the Lord. So after Jesus comes forth, David is, that heavenly David is our Jesus, our Lord. Do you believe that tonight? And he came into his throne where? Right here in this earth on top of Hebron where they anointed him the third time. And he looked up on Zion and saw Jebusites. Jebusites are thoughts. They're, they're religious spirits that keep us out of the blessings of God. And they said to David, you got so much blind and lame stuff. Well, he couldn't help it. He was in the shape you was. He had to get all that, all that out of it, just like we do. Right? And the Bible said David despised the lame and the blind. He despised them things that kept him out. But he said, if anybody will get up there first and knock him off that wall, I'll make him captain. No, praise God for Joab. He is mean. He is bad. And he'd kill, just soon kill you as look at you. But he beat them all to the top of side and knocked them Jebusites down off that wall. When David took that, you know what they call it? The stronghold of Zion. He took the stronghold of Zion. I don't know what you'll have to overcome. You, you may have to overcome your family. You may have to overcome your friends. You may have to overcome that old mother church you come out of. But I'll tell you what, if you'll despise the lame and the blind, if you'll despise anything that's caused you from walking fully into it or from seeing my revelation into what God wants for you, He'll give you the stronghold of Zion. If your soul knows anything that has robbed you of the truth that is in God's Word. And if you're adamant that you hate anything that has kept you from receiving the full revelation of God, then God will see to it that you are transported, translated, uh, hallelujah, into the hill of Zion. And Zion is the place where He establishes the throne. Glory. Because Jesus is called the seed of David, that guarantees us an inheritance in the throne. Through Abraham we inherit the earth, but through David we inherit the throne. What good's the earth if you have to succumb to the earthly? But if you can sit in the earth in another realm and another dimension, then that earth has become the what? Footstool! Uh, the footstool! But heaven has become your throne! Right. Glory. Glory to God! The body holds the head up! The head don't sit down in the seat. The body sits down in the seat, but the body holds the head. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus' name. That's where, see, that's what the beauty of it all is. God is beckoning you to come by way of His glory and experience being around the throne. Then you can experience being in the throne. Then you can experience coming out of the throne. Can you say praise the, praise the Lord? Now I want us to just look at a few scriptures here concerning this. I want, I want you to look with me in Psalm 132. Now I'm going to read these as fast as I can. But it says in... Uh, let's just start there in the first. It said, Lord, remember David and all his afflictions, how he swore to the Lord and vowed the mighty God of Jacob, Surely I will not come in to the tabernacle of my house, nor go up unto my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes, nor slumber to my eyelids, until I find a place for the Lord, a habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. Notice he didn't say a visitation. He said a habitation. Right. I will not rest until I bring the glory to this house. Hallelujah. I will not rest 
until I can look out that window and see the Shekinah light of God shining on this city. Are you with me now? And he said, we heard of it. Heard of what? They heard of that ark of the covenant, that glory of God that shone on it at, at, at Ephrata. And we found it in the fields of the woods. Isn't that where we were Sunday night? And he said, we will go unto his tabernacles. Not tabernacle, but tabernacle. That's three dimensions of God, folks. Right. Yeah. 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 Glory. 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 Jesus. How many structural tabernacles or temples was built not counting that little tent that David had? Glory to God, for they didn't need a house on David's mountain. The glory was their house. But, right. but listen to me. How many structures was built in the Old Testament? Three. Moses' tabernacle, Solomon's temple, and Zerubbabel's temple. Yet the Holy Ghost said through the prophet Haggai that the glory of this latter house would be greater than that of the former. And in this place will I give peace. In this place will I give peace, saith the Lord. So David said, we'll go to his tabernacles. Woo. We'll go to the altar of sacrifice. But we're not stopping there. We're not camping there. Excuse me, brother evangelical, while I step over you so that I can go to the tabernacle of Pentecost. And then when I get in the tabernacle of Pentecost, excuse me. Excuse me, old line Pentecostal. I'm not being facetious or ugly. All them people are wonderful in their own way, but I'm saying if there's more, I'm not going to feel guilty about stepping over them to get on down there where the rest of the loaf is at. Glory. Excuse me, old line Pentecostal, while I step into the third tabernacle. I'm going on then, I'm going to his tabernacles, not his tabernacle. There's a lot of people in the tabernacle, but what tabernacle are you in? That's like a lot of people who want to go to heaven, but what heaven are you in? There's a third heaven, hallelujah, where all of God is revealed and it's unlawful. It won't fit in the law. If all the works that Jesus did were to be written, the whole world wouldn't contain the volume. But there's volumes in this room tonight and he has come in the volume of the book to do his will, oh God. Amen. Amen. Tabernacles. And what did he say next? We will worship where? At his footstool. Ooh, hallelujah. Watch him feet on that footstool. Because when that body gets in the glory, them feet will go to moving. Them feet will get to dancing. Somebody say amen. Dancing on the head of death. <laughs> oh, glory, dancing. <laughs> Why are you dancing, run? Because he said, every place of souls of your feet shall trod. I will give it unto you. Hallelujah. You can dance and possess your home mortgage. You can dance and, and, and dance that bank note right out of your life. You can dance and dance your children. Hallelujah. Out of the beer joint and back home where they belong. You can cover territory. Don't look at that carpet in that living room. Let your spirit wander out there and find somewhere where you need to conquer something and pick them up and put them down and decree the decree for them to be established on. Amen. Now listen to what David said. Arise, O Lord, into thy rest. <laughs> Ain't but one place God ever rested. And that was in his creation. Six day, when he made man, there wasn't nothing else better he could make. If he could have made anything else better, he would have. But man was the highest form and supreme essence of His creation, made in His own image and His own likeness. And God looked around the seventh day and couldn't find nothing else to create because He had put all of Himself into that man. And there He rested on the seventh day. Have not I said, dear gods, and every one of you children of the Most High, well, he said it, I didn't say it. Hallelujah. So if, I, if, if in my mind I know 
that I'm a God because he created me out of his DNA. Apples makes apples, cats makes cats, dogs make dogs. Dogs can't birth cats, they can only birth dogs. God can't birth anything but himself. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, Brian, when Peter said you're a peculiar people, you know what that means? That's the same as saying apples are peculiar to apple trees. Pears are peculiar. don't mean weird. It means you're peculiar in that you're of the God kind. You're born bone of his bone. Somebody say amen. Well, glory to God. He said he found a place of rest. Amen. Noah sent the, the raven out. The raven didn't come home, did he? He found dead flesh to eat. That's the spirit of Babylon. The cage of every unclean fowl. Feasting on the dead, rotten flesh of kings. Revelation 17 and 18. Dead flesh, dead kings, dead thoughts, dead realms. Realms that God's already cast the life out of. But they're still preaching them. Still declaring them. Mixing law with grace. Preaching do's and don'ts. Preaching the tree of death. Instead of the tree of life. Somebody say amen. Are you getting it? And then the, the, the Lord said, David said to the Lord, said, get over here in your rest. Arise into your rest. Ooh, get back in your creation. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he said, thou and the ark of thy strength or thy presence. Hallelujah. And then he said, let the priest get clothed or something. I'm tired, David said, of seeing these priests in, in, in sackcloth and ashes. Right. And I'm tired of seeing saints in sackcloth and ashes. Right. You just wait, they'll have the sackcloth on Sunday morning. <laughs> they, they're getting their charts ready right now yeah. to deliver a, a damnation and dooming sermon Sunday morning first thing. They're going to get up and announce that the world's come to an end. All because a certain man got elected, they'll say the earth's going to come to an end. Everything's going to be over with. Calamity is on its way. Let me tell you, there ain't no earth and man going to stop the plan of God from coming forth in the earth. I don't care who it was. Let them, I mean, I'm, I'm glory to God. I'm just telling you, just get ready for it. When you turn that TV on Sunday morning, you ain't going to want to hear five minutes of what them preachers has got to say. Because they're going to tell you you're going to starve to death. They're going to tell you that, that everybody's gone to hell in the handbasket and the church is going to the dogs and everything else. But we'll come right over here Sunday morning, pick our feet up and dance like we've always done. We'll feel the Lord and speak in tongues and prophesy and shout. Glory to God. Why? Because my feet are on sign. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I know where the footstool is, honey. Glory to God. Amen. We're throne people. We're glory people. We're destined to overcome and rule and reign in the throne. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Now then, he said, get them priest out of that sackcloth. Oh, some of these saints need to get out of the sackcloth. Everything, Sister Heflin preached at one time and said she hated them D words. Despondent and depressed and downcast and downhearted. Well, I do too. But, but praise God, David said, I don't want them priests coming in here clothed in that sackcloth and ashes. Uh, I, I mean, no, he wasn't just talking about the Levitical order, but he was prophesying about the kingdom of priests uh, that was going to come forth in this earth. And they're not going to be clothed with natural rain, but they're going to be clothed with robes of what? Righteousness. Let the priests be clothed with righteousness. Glory. And let the saints do what? Let them shout. Shout for joy. Hallelujah. Woo. He said to let the saints shout. You know what he was saying? He was saying to the Lord, if you let me get my hands on that heart, if you let me get that glory here on this mountain, hallelujah, I won't let them priests operate under that old Levitical way again. I'll make them worship you. 
Uh, he did too. He split them preachers into 24 courses. They took 24 hour shift work and all they did was play and prophesy and sing. Read your Bibles. In first Samuel 24 and 25. All they did was pray and sing and prophesy. What was they doing? David said, get that sackcloth off of them. Now what did he say? Turn not your face from thine anointed. The Lord sworn he won't turn from him. Verse 12 says, if those children keep that covenant, that throne will never, 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 never take away from them. They'll sit on it how long? Forever more. You know what he says? Why? Somebody tell me. Why? For the Lord hath what? Chosen Zion. Huh? What did he choose her for? His habitation. He chose to plant him in his throne right in the midst of her. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. So you got no business getting scared of circumstances, situations. You're Zion people. Throne people. My God, that king sitting on the throne ain't never wrong even when he is wrong. Why? Because he's got dominion, authority, and power. Glory to God. And then, how I many is getting blessed for the word tonight? And it says in verse 14 that the Lord said, This is going to be my rest. How long? Forever. And he said, Here will I dwell. Now, why is he going to dwell there? Is he going to dwell there just because we forced him to? Or just because religion said he has to? No, he said, I've desired it. What is God's desire? To get down here among his people and sit down in the midst of them. Woo, hallelujah. That ruling right in their midst. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I'm glad I don't believe in a God that's far off a yonder, way beyond the clouds, sitting up there in some distant world city, waiting on me to finally get there so he can tell me if I've sinned or not. But I'm glad to know right here in our midst, in this building tonight, right here in the midst of this tabernacle, there is a God who is seated in his people, in his creation out there. And we're the body holding up the head tonight. Glory. And he said, uh, let's see. I'll abundantly bless her provision. I'll satisfy her poor with bread. And I'll clothe her priest with salvation. And once again he said, get them saints up and let them shout for joy. The Lord likes a lot of shouting. And I want to tell you something, your pastor loves a lot of shouting. I'm with the Lord on that one. Brother Howes got with the Lord on old Charlie. He said, old Charlie wouldn't tune his guitar because he was scared if he did he'd get out of the spirit. And he wouldn't rehearse his song because he was scared he'd get out of the spirit. So he'd get up there and talk and go dong, 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 talk, tuning that guitar, clearing his throat every two or three minutes and saying, y'all pray for me. The devil's been after me all week. Got a frog in my throat. But he said, I'm going to sing anyhow and give the devil a black eye. He said, devil just don't want me to sing tonight. And Brother Howe said he punched his buddy, sat beside of him and said, I'm with the devil on this one. I've heard him sing. <laughs> Said, I've heard him sing. <laughs> All right, I want to go to another psalm now. I want you to go to Psalm 102. If they ever say, don't listen to the way I sing it, just listen to the words, you better hunt you some ear plugs. <laughs> that usually means that if they don't want to hear them themselves singing, I don't want to either, praise God. Can you say amen? Amen. You're in double trouble if you ever hear anybody start off that way and say, don't listen to what I sing, the, the way I sound, just listen to Well, how are you going to listen to anybody sing without hearing the way they sound? It's real easy. If you can carry a tune, you're called to sing, maybe. But I'll tell you what, you may not never sing for the Lord because you may know you can sing. And if you know you can, you may think nobody else can. <laughs> just, just saying, God. Psalm 102, you there? Verse 13. I want you to listen to these. These are marvelous words. It said, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yea, the set time, glory to God, is come. Now, I wish I had all night to tell you that God's been waiting all this time for a people.
people to gather in Zion. They've been gathered in Sinai for years. They still gathered at Sinai. That's that law of preaching. And you can't never get in no presence of God there because they make you so afraid of God you don't dare approach Him. But these people in Zion, the Lord's appointed a time, a set time. And it ain't a time to whip them and it ain't a time to chastise them and it ain't a time to cast them off and it ain't a time to judge them. But blessed be God, it's a time to favor them. Hallelujah. He said, for thy servant's sake, or for thy servants take pleasure in her stones. Oh, I'm glad I'm one of them lively stones. Oh, yeah. Jesus was talking to them men and said, shut these people up. If you don't, we can't stand the right. He said, why, if they hold their peace, glory to God. He said, the rocks is going. How many know the rocks did cry out? The Bible said we are lively stones. Somebody say amen. So hey, he said, for thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust. Oh, aren't you glad he remembers that we are but dust? I'd like to get back over there in that original dust I come from. He created man of the dust of the earth, didn't he? Somebody say amen. And the Bible said, favor the dust thereof. One time, you know, when I first got introduced to Sister Heflin, I just didn't know about all that. I was I was tough and mean and, and against everything in them days. And somebody invited me to go to the little town of Mount Dora. How many knows where Mount Dora is? And go here at Ruth Heflin. <laughs> Bless be God I got in there. And they was telling me when we were sitting there before this the service was getting started good, said I never seen anything like it. Said the glory dust gets on her and said you can see it just shining. All of I said, glory dust. I, I thought, my God, what have I done coming down here? And in a little bit she got up and started to preach. Well, I was right happy in that particular time with how she looked. I thought she looked wonderful. <laughs> I did. She had on a long dress, had her hair all pinned up nice. I thought, glory to God, she dressed right. I can hear her now. But the thing was, when she got to preaching, something come up on her face right here. Big old circle like that, and it just glitter, glowed and glittered. And I said, what is that on her face? And they said, that's a glory dust. I thought, my God, even she's doing it. You know, I just thought maybe them people that invited me to go was doing it. And all of a sudden, the power of God hit her, and she took her a good jerking uh, dance for a minute there. And when she did, that whole glory of God just went everywhere. I mean, it swung everywhere. Boy, let me tell you something from that moment on. I wanted to know everything I could about what that woman did to get that to happen in her meeting. I studied that way I could. Well, it wasn't nothing she done. She just knew how to get them people to worship God enough that they all got the glory of God together. They had a bus full of a girl's school that had came to that meeting. And I went through the prayer line and I come back to my seat. And when I did, I got halfway up the aisle. And I was hit in the face with the strongest perfume and aroma I ever smelled. And I thought, what in the world is that smell? And I looked up, and three or four of them girls from that, that Christian school couldn't have been more than 13, 14, maybe the oldest one, 16, 17 in that area, standing there weeping and crying with their hands out like this, and the oil was just running off the end of their fingertips. And you could smell it all over the room. And them little old girls didn't know what was happening to them. They was, some of them were scared and some of them were so touched by it. They was weeping and all that. And I went out there and said, now see, look, look. I was getting hungry by then. I knew there was more to it than what we was having. Just church as usual. Wasn't cutting it no more. And I want to tell you what I've done. i got everything I could get my hands on. You want to know how to get something? Go after it. I got everything I could get my hands on. I read every piece of literature I could read, brother. Amen. Because I thought, my Lord, if the glory of God can come in that service and manifest that like that, it didn't make no difference to me what they was doing. If I'd have thought 
not standing on my head. Would have got something like that to happen. I'd have got somebody to hold one leg and one hold the other while I did it. Bless God, just to get a visitation of the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you see, the Lord is coming to favor us. Yes. And he said that the heathen is going to fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear. Right. Now how's he going to appear? In his glory. Woo. He said build them up out. Build them up in spiritual praise and worship and right. faith and believing and coming together and believing that God will produce such an environment right here in this earth. Hallelujah. Yes. He said then I'm going to appear in glory. And he'll regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. This shall be written. Are you listening to me now? This shall be written for the generation to come. David said, I'm writing this. Oh, hallelujah. For a people that's going to be born on this earth who are going to gather in Zion. And when they do, the Lord is going to appear amongst those people in His glory. Somebody say, praise the Lord. You don't need a ticket to the Holy Land to find Zion. You're sitting in her tonight. Glory to God, you're right in her midst. The Bible said He looked down... Uh, what, let, we read the rest of verse 18 said that, that there's a people which shall be created who shall praise the Lord. Yes. And then he said, verse 19, he looked down from the height of his sanctuary, from heaven did the Lord behold the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoner and to loose those that are appointed to death. Yes. To declare his name in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. When the people are gathered together, honey, there's a gathering going on. Oh, blessed be the name of God. Aren't you glad you come to Wednesday night meeting? There's a people being gathered from the north and the south and the east and the west. There's a people being gathered and they ain't gathered to hear the latest number one hit. They're not gathered to hear the famous evangelist with revival in his suitcase. Uh, they're not gathered together to hear the latest, greatest apostle prophet. They're gathering together. And I want to tell you whether the carcass is. Woo, hallelujah. Fitter with the eagle's feet gathered. Glory to God. There's a carcass. Uh, the people who's dead in their life is hid with Christ in God. Amen. Do you believe it? They're together with my dead body shall they rise. The eagles are gathered. They've been over there behind the cliff of Bolton. They've lost the old feathers, the old doctrines, the old mindsets, the old persuasions of men have come out of them. They stood up and the world has said, look at them scrawny chickens. Them ain't chickens, them eagles. They're starting to let the oil go out of their skin. The orbit's running down the beard and on down the body and the skirts of the garment. And the eagles are getting one of the faces of those living creatures is the eagle. And the Bible said, we shall mount up with wings. And said, you're going to fly. Don't worry about it. You may not fly through them skies up yonder, but you're going to fly. You're going to fly in Him. You're going to fly in the anointing. You're going to fly in the glory. Hallelujah. You're going to fly in the Spirit. Somebody say amen. amen. Whenever you worship them, creatures are flying in this room. Woo, like lightning, they're coming and going. You say, what are they doing? They're bottling up all them prayers. Well, hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. And they're carrying them to pour them out in that throne of God. Amen, church. He said there's a people going to gather. And it looks to me like the people that's going to gather kingdom people. Now what he says in that verse? They better, they better get off these kingdom folks and leave us alone. We're gathering on a new mountain. We've left Sinai. We've come to Mount Sinai. Somebody say amen. Don't quit. I've got to. Have I got anything left back there? Ten minutes. Oh.
Okay, I won't take them all then. I'll just take five and split it in the middle, okay? Oh, hallelujah. I tell you, I got to cut my preaching short so we can get around here some of these Wednesday nights and worship the Lord a little bit. Hallelujah. Before we go home. I can preach anytime. I can save it for Sunday, can't you? <laughs> Amen. But we need to get in the habit of coming together and worshiping the Lord for eight but five or ten minutes just so we can see, make sure God, you know why we got those prophetic words a while ago? Because we change that atmosphere into a worship atmosphere. And every time you do that, the Lord starts speaking. All right. He, now look at here. He's, these kingdom peoples gather. Amen. Now look at verse 23. It said, He weakened my strength in the way and shortened my days. Now, I'm glad He shortened my days in that realm I was in. Because I'd hate to know I'd still stuck where I used to be stuck. Yeah. Wouldn't you? Yeah. Some of them days you didn't know if you was going to make it or not. Right. Mm -hmm. But today you can take it, take a licking and keep on ticking. Amen. Don't you? Oh, yeah. you say amen. amen. Aren't you tougher than you used to be? Yeah. You know how you got that way? You went through something. Yeah. And you got tough. Yeah. Now you do get a little meaner when you get tougher. But all that means is not so many folks are mess with you. Yeah. Amen. They don't want to hear you get you stirred up. We're like a lion, old Judah is. Yes. Who's going to rouse him up? Oh. All right. He said, I said, oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations. All right. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth. And the heavens are the work of thy hand. That's the reason in John 14 when Jesus said, I go to prepare a place. He wasn't talking about heaven. He made heaven before he made earth. The place he's going to prepare was Calvary. He is going to open up a new way for us to come in through the veil. All right, read on now. He said, they shall perish. What shall perish? Those heavens and those earth. What happens? That's your mind that has everything to do with your belief system. Amen? The earth has everything to do with your struggle in this realm. He said you're gonna, it's going to pass away. You remember Paul quoted this in Hebrews, the first chapter, like a vesture. They said they'll wax old like a garment and as a vesture. Right? But the Lord, what did he say? He said, I'm going to endure. Didn't he? Yeah. They'll pass, but I'm going to endure. Buddy, you better believe in, in, in our walk with the Lord. There's been a many of heaven pass away. Yeah. And a many of earth pass away. Yeah. Can you say amen? Yeah. That heaven is anything you hold is spiritual. And I can tell you tonight what I thought used to be spiritual. I don't think spiritual enough. I thought to be spiritual meant you prayed so many hours, fasted so many days a week, did so much. But I've learned now that I'm spiritual because I've got the Spirit. Amen. Amen. I've got the Spirit in me. All right. And he said, I, as a vesture thou shalt change them. They shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. And the children of thy servants shall continue, and their seed shall be established. Oh, we're of that seed. Hallelujah. He said, I've established me a seed that's going to declare my name. Yes. Didn't it? The Bible said there's a people. I didn't get the, the living preacher, but anyway, we got Zion, didn't we? Mm -hmm. There's a people that's counted unto the Lord for a generation. Yes. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. His matchless love has constrained him to share the wealth and spoils of his finished work with his brethren. He's divided a portion of the spoil. You know when Esther come to that throne, you know what she did to get to that throne? She spent six months in myrrh and six months in sweet-smelling spices. That myrrh is praise, the spices is worship. You, boy, when you worship him, praise him, 
Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Don't get out to pray in an old dry atmosphere. Cut you some good music on. Yes. Turn some good praise and worship yes. music on. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I'm not telling you what to do, but now don't get something that's so fast you get out of breath thinking about how to pray. Get you some praise and worship music. You know what I'm saying? Even if they ain't singing, if it's just an orchestration of it, just music. But, but I prefer the voices because the voices have the glory on them. And when you get down to pray, get your voice in tune with that radio or that CD player. And if you said, I don't know the words, so we don't worry about the words, just sing a few hallelujahs. Sing a few glory to God. Sing a few praise the Lord. And if you get bold enough, get on out of your shell, sing in tongues a while. No, oh, I could never do that. Well, Paul said, I'll sing in the Spirit, and I'll sing with my understanding. He did both. And it won't be but a little while, a whole other atmosphere will move in that room. I mean, it'll move in that room, and I'll tell you something else. If people come, were to come in that room at that moment, they could tell you that that atmosphere in that room was a glorious atmosphere because you changed the atmosphere when you praise, when you worship. Brother, when you come up out of them six months of burn, and six months of sweet smelling spices, and you get the throne in that condition, he'll lower the scepter. I said he'll lower the scepter and tell you, claim whatever you want. You'll go there, if you start out praying that way, you'll come out with all kind of things you won't ask him about. But when he asks you, was there anything you won't ask him, chances are you say, well, Lord, if it was, I can't remember it. Hallelujah. Why? Because your spirit knows that he's already met the need, that he's already provided. Oh, and it's been beautiful tonight. Lord, I just can't wait. I'll start to say Sunday, but we've been having such a dynamo on Thursday. I can't wait till tomorrow to get up in that glory and see what he has for us. Amen. Oh, God bless you. If there's any way you can get here tomorrow, you do it. If you can't, we'll see you Sunday. But let's stay in the throne, in the realm, for all things, hallelujah, are full of life. Life. Even life forevermore. He's commanded his blessing. God bless you. Hallelujah.